Good morning, everybody. Uh, you are listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. A one and only, it is Steve Harvey. Yeah, got a radio show. Okay. This is uh, timely for everybody, I'm sure. Um, I want to offer you all uh, some encouragement because everybody need it. Let me tell you something. Uh, you strike out on your goals. You strike out on your aspirations. You get uh, headed out on the course to fulfill your dreams. You strike out on a mission to get it accomplished. You have resolutions. You decide that this is what it's going to be. And so you strike out. All, in it, uh, all engines blasting. Full force. Straight ahead. And then it happens, as it happens to all of us. Here it comes, a setback. Here it comes, something pop up. Man, here it comes, the unexpected. All out of nowhere, man, a hater, just something. That, that really, man, is undescribable to you because you're just going along your what you thought was your merry way. And here it comes. Life. Life just hits one of them bad notes, as it always does, as it always does for all of us, for everybody. Now, when those bad notes happen, when the haters come out of nowhere, when the setback comes up, when the, when the out of nowhere appears, when the I didn't see that coming comes, here is, here's what you have to do. Here is the thing that I have been teaching myself for years that I used to not always understand, so I'm trying to give it to you. You have to be encouraged anyway. Now, that's difficult. Okay, Steve, what you talking about? You just told me all this discouraging stuff that can happen, and you said you got to be encouraged anyway. Yeah, man, you have to. Because what's happening to you right now, the thing that you're going through right now, the thing that everybody's going through right now, ain't nobody on smooth sailing, man. Everybody got something. 
And if they if they don't smooth sail it, just know this is coming. There's nothing I'm wishing on anybody. It's just that this is life. This is how it happens, everybody. So please stop stop getting on the old woe is me bandwagon. Oh Lord, why me? Oh Lord, something always happened to me. Something always happens to everybody. But here's what you got to do when you get in moments like this. You got to be encouraged. You got to remember in those times, in those times when it's going wrong, you got to remember all that you've been through. You got to remember all that you've come through. You have to remember those other times when you felt like this and somehow, unexplainably, you don't even really stop to say nothing about it. It just changed for you. And the problem that was is no more. And the situation that seemed so insurmountable, you got over it. You got around it. You got over it. Sometimes you just got to slide right under it. Sometimes you got to plow through it. But in those times when it's discouraging for you, when you feel like giving up, those are the tests. Those are the moments that will determine whether we make it or not. I'll tell you one thing for sure. If you give up in these moments right here, here is a for show. Sure, you'll never make it. That's, 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 that's unquestionably the deal. If you give up in these dark times, if you give up in these what you think is insurmountable moments, if you turn back now, here is the 1,000% for show. Sure, you ain't going to make it. But there is a bright side to this situation. If you keep your head down, if you keep forging, if you keep pressing on, sometimes if you just stand there and sometimes get knocked to your knees, but if you stay in that place, if you just stay there and ride the storm out, my head is bloodied but unbowed. If you can just stay there, if you can sit in that moment and ride it out, you will win. You will win. You will pass the test, and you will get to move on to the next level. But there is no next level without a test. You can't get to grade six without passing grade five. You can't be a senior without first being a junior. You can't graduate without fulfilling the hours and requirements. You see, I don't care what you do in life. Look at it. It's all set up on levels where you've got to accomplish the thing before in order to get to the next level. And when you've made those level accomplishments, you get to graduate. Now, you can go on and get a master's and a Ph.D. You can go on and become rich. You can go become wealthy or you can go or you can go somewhere and think yourself in another set of circumstances. But you got to go through something to get to something. There ain't nothing free. So you can stop that notion about being successful. That is easy. Come on, man. If it was easy, what 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 we on what we talking about? It is not easy. Stop thinking it is. It is difficult. But I'll tell you what's even more difficult than becoming successful. You want to know what that is? Try not being successful your whole life. That's hard. You are listening to a person who has done them both. Been successful and really, really been not successful. And I got news for you. Both of them hard. But I would rather deal with what it is to be something, to make something out of myself, to force myself to go to work when I don't feel like it. This morning was a rough get up for me. But I got up and I said, thank you anyway. Never give up. And I don't watch this dude till he done mess around and got close to me because he just never gave up. You can, you can never, ever give up. Never. It's not an option. Giving up cannot be an option for you. You cannot do that. You, it's, it's out of the question. It's inconceivable in your mind to quit. Because to quit 
is to what? What you get when you quit? Nothing. There is a reward for those who hang in there, who never give up, who forge through, who see it through, who get knocked down and get back up, who gets trampled but somehow gathers themselves and get back to your knees. But stay in that place, man. Don't ever give up. Don't let go. Be encouraged. Think of all you've been through. Think of all you come through. Think of all he's done for you. Think of all the times you thought you wasn't going to make it, but somehow, without you ever even saying thank you, he got through. He got you through it anyway. That's that thing called grace now. We kind of need that in our life. I, I, all, I, all I need is a little more grace. You can't give God no money for grace, man. Grace is absolutely free. It's available to everybody. But you can't get none if you quit. Don't give up. I'll just tell you that flat out. Don't ever give up. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is about to go down for the... How many... You know what? What, Steve? Somebody should get a calculator out and calculate how many morning shows approximately... We've wow. done since 2005. Oh, my God. Let me do that for you. Is this an I mean, April Fool's question? No. What? Oh, okay. Oh, today is April. April Fool's. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't do that, so whatever. <laughs> We're going to do questions today or something like that? Well, I can do some level of ignorance. Whatever y'all want to do. Shirley Straw. Barry. <laughs> Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Steve? You know, I hiccuped in the middle of it and tried to just turn it in like oh, I was I doing it on uh, purpose. Okay, that was pretty yeah, slick. I like that. It. Yeah. I like that. I, I know little moves like yeah, that. You know, when you're on stage and you and you hiccup, uh-huh. you got to do something. Uh-huh. Carla Pharrell. What's going on? Good morning, Steve and crew. What up, Junior? Morning, Unc. Morning, everybody. Pimp Tommy, what's happening? Doggy dog. Monday, baby. The sun is a shining ever so bright and i'm happy to be alive today oh man Man. come on boy happy to be alive man had a great weekend uh work went and hung out with a friend did a foundation for my buddy seth down in uh Orlando, Florida. Went right back to Orlando. I was Disney Dreamers the week before and went right back. Oh, how was it? Oh, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Played golf two days in a row. Oh, uh, only okay. nine okay. holes, though. No, not just nine holes. Oh, okay. Mm. Still okay. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that was then, fun, you know, I just try to mix in a little bit. Then I worked Saturday night, and I uh, was the only celebrity there, so I was tag you it. <laughs> Tag you in. Man, I should I should Steve, let y'all see this Steve, picture Steve. that my assistant took of me mm-hmm. while these people had came up. Be, you know, okay, now imagine this. Now, we're in a banquet hall. Okay. And we had all, everybody's got these big round tables. Tables are 10000 a piece, some of them 25000 I'm sitting at the table in the middle, up at the front. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, during dinner, people were getting up, walking up. And I'm like, it's me, my back is to the dance floor Mm -hmm. because we're the first table you know how the tables be surrounding the dance floor so i'm in the middle table middle of the dance floor facing my back to the dance floor and the stage people would come up behind me have their friend go on the other side of the table and just bend over at face level and take pictures with me (laughs) that's That's when you know you're real famous well you famous (laughs) Boy, I got I got to let y'all see a couple of these pictures he took of me, man. Steve, you mind looking at me? Steve. Look at the line, huh? Hey, Steve, you mind looking at me for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Junior. <laughs> now, there were 700 people at this banquet. Oh! Wow. <laughs> oh, you were smiling. Yeah, and you're the only celebrity there? Man. Oh, yeah. Who else oh, was yeah. sick you of being me? You worked the room, baby. You I was sick of room. being me. <laughs> 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 but when we got up there for the auction, uh-huh. boy, your boy was crazy. Aw, Steve. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Coming up at 32 after the hour, a little weekend review. We've got a preview from Steve just right now, but we'll have more uh, right after this at 32 after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Happy Monday, everyone. Uh, we'll find out what 
Happened over the weekend. How was everyone's weekend? Steve, uh, you sounded like you had a great weekend in Orlando, back Man, in Orlando. Man, it's a great benefit called Kids House down mm-hmm. in Orlando. And uh, one of my best friends, Seth Bernstein's wife, Maria, uh, heads up the foundation. And he asked me to come down and host it. And I did an auction. Uh, they raised a lot of money. Uh, your boy, your boy was clowning at the auction. Mm-hmm. The most they've raised at their auction has been about two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand. How uh, are you boy, clowning at the auction? Oh, oh, your boy broke all records last night. We had uh, over six hundred fifty thousand. Oh, right. Whoa! So what were you doing though? You well, doing? you know, I had to auction off stuff, and uh, oh, okay, you were auctioning. They would uh, so I had the newscaster buddy of mine named Jim. He went up and he would describe the project. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. whatever, like a, a trip over to Europe for six the days, prize six or nine. whatever. You know, is. they had a, they had a lot of prizes, uh-huh. and we had seven of them to do. And uh, I just I just went at it, man. Steve Harvey style made it real funny. Mm-hmm. People were talking fast like the auctioneers though. Oh no hey, no no! I ain't, I ain't finna do that. Yes, that ain't what you did. That's All right, y'all, let's start this off here like 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got four damn grand. The tables is 25. <laughs> so you, you just tapped to- out now. You ain't got nothing for the. Let's, these is for kids in this right. All right, I got 4,000 right here. Let's go 4,500. Uh-huh. We're going to increments of five. Don't give me no 41. Ain't nobody finna be counting like that. I can't keep up. 4,500. <laughs> Hell, why am I here? <laughs> what I'm down here for? That's cool, Steve. That's so the you were telling them how to bid? <laughs> oh, man, we was clowning, man. We had a good time. So I got a lot of people being against each other. And I, you know, so I just did it. This one guy, though, was at the thing. Mm-hmm. And he was interesting because he was way in the back. He kept bidding, but he kept losing. Mm-hmm. You know, he was getting out bidding. He just, he's just crazy. So he got up to this one bid, and it was something we was bidding on for eight thousand dollars. And he mm-hmm. said, "Steve, he's way in the back. Mm-hmm. Steve, I get eight thousand, and I want a picture with my family back here." I said, "My man, if you do this for the charity, I'll come right there and take a picture with you and your family." Cool, eight thousand dollars. The guy up front goes nine thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we ain't going back there to do that picture. Nine thousand, Steve. You ain't got to do a picture with me. I just took a hundred of them standing right here. <laughs> man, I had a good time. So I go in the back to this uh, guy, and I felt bad for him. And I said, "Hey, man, you lost another bid." He said, "I'm just gonna be honest with you. You know, you're not worth an eight thousand dollars a picture with you." Oh, that was nice. Okay. And so the audience went, "Oh, like you know, why you doing? Why you saying that about the man? You know, I just yeah. walked around, just you know." I ain't, ain't bothering me. I said, you ain't. I just walked <laughs> off, you know. I uh, just said it into the uh, mic. You, know. uh, you said, you ain't said it into the mic. No, I said it right there, just like that. Okay, we're still <laughs> live, Steve, on the air. All right, well, that's what I said live last night. <laughs> you know, so I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Does it want to just kill the story? <laughs> Keep it moving. You know better. Finish the story. Well, Stop you the know, and then, you know, it kind of stumped him a little bit, you know. But, you know, I, was, I had got tired by that point. You know, once I get tired, the filter's off. Yeah. There so, you, you know, we just had then They was really laughing because your boy was gut bucket funny. <laughs> <laughs> then they had uh, this sheriff who was the head of the one of the heads. He came up with, uh, you can come down. And ride with SWAT one day, try on the vest. You can go shooting. You can ride in a helicopter, and you can ride down the river canals where they do the uh, uh, drug reinforcement training. And you can fire live rounds. Ride along. And I said, man, that's great, great. Yeah, who who wants to? Who wants to die? <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. Come on, get your hand up in there. Let's talk $5,000. Throw your life out the way. Mess around, fall out that damn helicopter. You know your ass way too much to be up in that helicopter. Uh, riding, riding down the canal and somebody really starts shooting. Now, you done took one in your arm. Oh, I had them people screaming, man. Steve? It sounds like we did a little stand-up. That's what it sounds like. It does. Boy, it does. Let me tell That's you That's what it sounds like. like that. Boy, your boy. <laughs> Wait a minute. The winner, I had these That's people what it said. Hey, man, I've got to tell you, the comedy muscle is live and well. There we go. It's uh, my timing is sharp. Come on. 
I'm just, I'm just, I've been thinking Say about it, it but the, it. you know, the, the, it's, the problem is political correctness ah. is yeah, killing is. Oh, wow. Ah, yeah. It's killing it. Mm-hmm. Come on, now, at the club, you're straight, though. You can say whatever the heck you want to at the club. Yeah, but see, if I go back, I got to do like everybody else do. is doing. Now, I need your cell phones in a zip-up bag. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Do you do that when you go out, Tommy and Junior? Mm-mm. No, they be no. right there video on mine. No, that's right a, that's a service that you have to pay for. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I'm not paying that much. Oh, it's a service. Uh-huh. Yeah, they just come out there, they do that. Yeah, they'll put them in a bag, put them away, the give them to the people they need. Because right. uh-huh. you can't say Junior lost yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're not going <laughs> But you're mentioning that, though, Tommy, because you're still trying to put your tour together, right? Try to put my uncle out there one more yeah. time. One more time. Yeah. To go on tour. You know. uh, to go on tour. Yeah, yeah. do some stand up. One more for the gipper. You know, let's go get so it. So, how you feel about that, Steve? <sighs> he ready. You just did an option. I know. Let's, <laughs> you can't, let's go. Okay, tour, because politically correct, that's what you think? Is? Yeah, oh, man, because, I mean, I'm going to say something crazy. I want to say what I want to say. Well, they look for everything coming out of his mouth. Yeah, so. that, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Steve, I mean, you do, you do reasonably well on this show. And well, TV but, you know, look here. TV. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, let me explain something to you. Okay. Let me, let me just give you the subjects that can't be off limits, but probably it will get you in a lot of trouble. Hurry. Mm-hmm. R. Kelly, Jesse Smollett. I've been hit. Bill Cosby. <laughs> see right there? See how I got quiet? That's why I ain't going out. <laughs> all right, right, yeah, all right. Right there. Right there. <laughs> On right second thought. Right yeah, there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Church complaints with Reverend Motown, Deacon Def Jam, coming up right uh, after this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Tragic news to report. Hip-hop star and community activist Nipsey Hussle was shot and killed yesterday. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, we, we're definitely praying for his fiance Lauren London, the actress, and his children. Uh, so very sad. Oh, boy. Also in entertainment news, um, uh, other entertainment news, we're going to highlight some of the winners from the 50th annual NAACP Image Awards. And Chris Rock, Steve, Chris Rock ignored the ban on yeah. Jesse Smollett joke. Yes! Oh, my. Saw it. <laughs> you saw that, right? Saw it. Text him to talk to him about it. <laughs> well, you have some inside information. Good. And then Omari Hardwick, we know him as Ghost from uh, Power. Uh, he's mm-hmm. receiving some bash- backlash from kissing Beyonce. Um, he kissed B? Yeah. But right now, it's Monday. Reverend Motown, Dick and Def Jam are here with today's church complaints. Let's go. We. Mm, no. Mm, we. Get in there. Get forward. In there. Mm. Forward we move in gratitude. That's right. My Lord, my Lord, today is a great day. Yes, it is. And we about to mess it all up with a bunch of complaints. Just a few. <laughs> Let us begin. Go ahead, Deacon. All right. Uh, Happy Monday to you as well, Pastor. Listen, uh, the Deacon board is complaining that the... Pastor, I don't know if you know it, but after they did the count uh, on Sunday evening, we are excited, excited to give the news that we are now planning for the construction of the new church. We have enough money to get the building started. We are all... Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. I just said, my Lord. Amen. Yes. Now, <clears throat> here's some things that are going on. Uh, since marijuana is legal in this state, uh, the new ministry, uh, the Higher Dimension, is requesting a smoker's lounge to be added on to the new church as well. So that's up to you if you're going to allow them to have a smoking lounge. Well, uh, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Not for marijuana. Mm. We're not but it's legal, that. so that's why they ask. It may be legal, but the jackpot joint of Jerusalem has yet to find a way to make money off of it, so it's not going to be legal in hell. We right. smoking ain't going to be legal in heaven, mm. so we can't make it legal in hell. 
Okay. All right. Ah, uh, let's see the uh Sister Josephine Lockhart. Lockhart is uh wanting a pool party for her 75th birthday. She wants to wear her bikini. And the deacon board is asking that you please put a stop to this nonsense, because don't nobody want to see that. No, we, we don't. But mm. I'm going to go ahead and approve that, deacon. Why would you do that? Nobody wants to see it. Why would you Why would you do that? Well, then the pool party won't cost much, will it? If ain't what nobody do you mean? Be there. If don't nobody want to see it, we can throw the pool party pretty cheap. It's just going to be her. <laughs> okay. And the way she was going to do it anyway, because she ain't got no money to fly nowhere, she was going to put some sand in her bathroom up around the up, up around the bathtub and just going to step out the tub like she on the beach. Mm-hmm. And then we was going to put creative. it on Instagram and then make it, try to make it, we going to get one of them young kids to Photoshop the tub out. Mm-hmm. And she want to look like Halle Berry coming up out the water. That's not going to happen. Oh, it's going to be horrible, but I damn sure want to see it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll go ahead and go ahead and let them have it. Uh, you want to let her have it. All right. Well, hold on to your belt on this one, Pastor. The two Africans uh, joined church this past Sunday. They were the same ones that was with Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Let, uh, <laughs> they moved? They, <laughs> they, are, they are back and they joined Jackpot. Um, they are saying if you want to be in the, uh, more in the spotlight, they can whoop your ass tomorrow night, but they not going to really hurt you. But they can get you out there a lot better if you want to be in the spotlight. Uh, we are going to allow them to uh, come on and become members because we're going to use them in all of our plays. What, the, what they going to do in our plays? Man. Oh, these two boys can act. <laughs> Anytime you got two Africans acting like they white and pulling it off for weeks, we got to bring them boys in. And then I'm going to play the lead role, and when they, they when it's over, uh-huh. I'm going to tell them I'm the save Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Thank you, Brother Deacon. I'm the, you see yeah. how this this is this is this, this could be a parable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying right there? <laughs> Come on now. I like that. <laughs> oh Lord. So you want me to tell them that they are right to be a part of our congregation? Yeah. Them, them the right. two brothers. Uh, I now, follow when do you want them? When do we the have to brother, plan this right? Now, no, the when brother, do you want them? To... You, 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 you got more jokes or, or, is it, or, or is it my turn? <laughs> no, it's your turn. I just want to know what day you wanted to get jumped on because they gonna want to know that. Well, I'm gonna organize that when the two <laughs> brothers' names have not been released, but I have them. <laughs> Oh. Is uh the two Africans that did the work is I follow, uh-huh. and I go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's two brothers, I follow, and I go there. Yeah, it's gonna uh, be nice. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get jumped on on Saturday night, though. <laughs> thank you, Reverend. But, and, I, and I want double meat on my sandwich. <laughs> That's it for church complaints coming up at the top of the hour. Entertainment news right after this. What, can I say one last thing? Yes. Can, I mm. want my I want my noose in velvet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we're going to talk about the tragic news about Nipsey Hussle, who was shot and killed at his store in Los Angeles yesterday. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it was really horrible. But uh, right now, we're going to switch gears here and talk about the 50th annual NAACP Image Awards that was this past Saturday, uh, that were this past Saturday uh, in Hollywood. It was hosted by Anthony Anderson. We have to say, Steve, dun, 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 congratulations to you. You won an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Game Show Host for Family Feud, baby. Oh, boy. Yeah. Go ahead, huh? Come on now. You brought that home. Congrats. Mm. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's really good. That was big, man. You know who, who notified me as soon as it happened? Ooh. Roland Martin. 
Oh, wow. Oh, and nice. I think I was on a plane, mm-hmm. or I was in the car heading to the plane. Th- was it Thursday night? Mm-hmm. Was it Thursday night? Oh, when you were leaving? No, when was the Image Awards? Saturday, Saturday night. night. Saturday. Saturday night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was at the function. Yeah, you were auctioning mm-hmm. off things. Yeah, I was at the function. I was in the middle of doing yeah. something. Uh-huh. Yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, so thank you very much. It was big. You know, the Image Awards really do mean a lot to me. They really, really do, man. Yeah. I cherish those more than the Emmys that I get. And I mean that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seriously. They, they, they all over my office. Wow. I love those. Okay, and uh, yep. congratulations again. You won for Family Feud, so look at you. Power won for Outstanding Drama. Amari Hardwick won for Outstanding Actor. Go ahead. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, well deserved, I think. Blackish, oh, I love Blackish, won That's for Outstanding show. Comedy Series. What a brilliant series. That's my boy. TV show, That's yeah. Show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> R&B newcomer Ella May won Outstanding Album, and Jay-Z won the President's Award. Uh, and Beyonce was named Entertainer of the Year. And then Black Panther. Oh, Black Panther. Black Cleaned Panther up. won everything. Everything. <laughs> 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 everything. Same thing. Well, Should have had Yeah, Wakanda yeah. forever. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to talk about uh, more about Omari Hardwick when he kissed Beyonce at 34 um, after the hour. We will talk more about that. But first... Steve, uh, you said you've already spoken to Chris Rock. Um, he ignored uh, the no Jesse Smollett jokes rule. Hell yeah. <laughs> Take a listen to this. I guess I got to present an award that said no Jesse Smollett jokes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. What a waste of light skin, you know? <laughs> you know what I could do with that light skin? <laughs> That curly hair, my career would be out of here. <laughs> Run in Hollywood. <laughs> um. Yes, no, 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 just did. <laughs> what the hell was he thinking? <laughs> From now on, I ain't never gonna know just you're Jesse from now on. You don't even get the you no more. <laughs> <laughs> that you was respect. You ain't getting no respect from me. <laughs> That's classic, baby. Right? No. That was just Comic really good, work right man. There. And you know, but you know, no Jesse Swallow jokes. But you know, I mean, it's humor, man. I mean, you know, and people get tight about it. But man, I mean, it's the obvious thing. It's on everybody's mind. And what was they laughing at? They were laughing. Right, at the jokes. Yeah. No, they was hollering. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, all right, Steve, we gotta move on and get to the headlines. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Uh, thank you very much, Ann. This is Ann Tripp with the news. Former Vice President Joe Biden, they're all talking about this one, responding to allegations that he once kissed a Nevada politician on the back of her head, on a hair, saying that he's offered handshakes, he's offered hugs, expressions of affection through the years, but that he never acted inappropriately. Former Nevada Assemblywoman Lucy Flores published an essay in which she said that in 2014, while she was running for lieutenant governor, that Biden kissed her on the back of her head. Never do I claim that this was that rises to the level of a sexual assault or mm. or anything of that nature. What I am saying is that it's completely inappropriate, that it does not belong in any kind of a professional setting, much less in politics. And that is something that we should consider when we are talking about the background of a person who is considering running for president. By the way, Lucy Flores is a Democrat. Meanwhile, Biden, who's close to announcing a run for the presidency, says, quote, I may not recall these moments the same way. I may be surprised at what I hear, but we have arrived at an important time when women feel they can and should relate their experiences and men should pay attention and I will. President Trump is threatening to cut aid to Guatemala, El Salvador and Honduras, accusing those three nations of sending up the caravans of migrants that have made their way from Central America through Mexico's southern border. And now Trump's renewing his threat to completely close the U.S. southern border, despite warnings that shutting it down could wreak havoc on the U.S. economy. By the way, as the host of the show, Fox and Friends, discussed all of this, the Chiron or the words that, you know, go across the screen read Trump cuts U.S. aid to three Mexican countries. Of course, there are no 
three Mexican countries. So Fox later issued a statement saying, quote, we just want to make clear that the fun- the uh, that the funding is being cut off to three Central American countries. And we apologize for the error. Before the apology came, there were a lot of jokes on the Twitterverse about Fox and the kinds of people that the right wing network hires. Uh, the Democrat led House of Representatives voted to challenge a new pe- Pentagon policy that bans transgender people from enlisting and those already in the military from serving openly. Meanwhile, U.S. immigration officials releasing a number of Central American asylum seekers into the U.S. into a pop-up detention center. Authorities in Texas say these people are not breaking immigration law. They are lawfully seeking asylum. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, seeking suing Facebook, suing Facebook for letting real estate companies choose who sees ads for housing based on race and gender. Tops at the weekend box office was Dumbo. Fly, Dumbo. Fly. Dumbo made $45 million. Jordan Peele's horror flick Us came in number two. And it's going to rain all over the country today. April Fool's. Back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Boy, oh boy, guys, some really sad news. Uh, Grammy-nominated hip-hop artist and activist, community activist, Nipsey Hussle was killed on Sunday afternoon in a shooting right outside a store, a Marathon Clothing Store. It's on Slauson in Los Angeles. Uh, It left two other people wounded. Nipsey grew up in gang culture. However, Nipsey was incredibly involved in his local community in which he worked to prevent gang violence. He helped spear a major art initiative in his home neighborhood called Destination Crenshaw. Nipsey was doing good work. Nipsey was 33 years old. Uh, LeBron James, 50 Cent, Steph Curry, Pharrell Williams, all of the hip-hop community, fans, and and just people everywhere just are praying for his family and for his uh, fiance, actress Lauren London, and uh, his children. You know what? See, here's a part, you know, and everybody's has their say. So, I mean, what can I say that's going to be as profound as some of the things as other people have said? Uh, the obvious thing is it's sick. It's sickening. It's, it's sickening for his family, for his children, his wife, his fans. It's sickening for the culture. But you know what's really sickening? And I don't want you out now. And I want to say this and, and feel how you want to feel. Listen to me, man. As a community, when stuff like this happens in our community, that old ain't no snitching thing, that is not for you. That has nothing to do with it. We need to bring these people who did this to this man and his family and his fans and his friends and his loved ones. We need to bring it to justice. We need to help solve some of these crimes that happen, man, so senselessly in this community. And we got to stop this no snitching policy. It don't make no damn sense. Snitching was created for criminals from the philosophy of if you're going to do the time, if you're going to do the crime, you got to do the time. And that was what it was for. Now, what happened is all of these people got because in prison, if you snitch, you you know what's going to happen, right? But when these people get freed, they have brought this same philosophy back to the neighborhoods. That should not apply to us. We have got to report these incidents. Somebody saw something in the front of this man's store. Somebody saw something. And guess what? Somebody knows something. Because you don't do this and don't tell nobody. Whoever this driver was, somebody knows something, man. Somebody need to come forward. Because it's crazy, man. There's got to be justice in this. Yeah. And I want the same uproar y'all got about this from the police department as you got about Jesse to just because you think he lied. Mm. Now, everybody coming forward with that. What about this now? All right, Steve. Uh, we're going to um, move on. And uh, coming up next at 34 after the hour, actor Omari Hardwick is reaving, uh, receiving a bit of backlash for kissing Beyonce at the NAACP Image Awards. We'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, congratulations going out to Beyonce. She was named Entertainer of the Year at the 50th uh, Annual NAACP Image Awards Saturday night. Now, during her speech, uh, Beyonce graciously thanked her fellow nominees in the category, Take a Listen. Okay, Regina King, I love you so much. You've taught us patience, persistence, and how to be masterful in your craft. 
Chadwick Boseman is teaching children to dream and to see themselves as kings. LeBron James has taught us the strength, that strength of all forms in leading by example and providing education for our kids. Ryan Coogler tells our stories in a way that celebrates our history and proves that we do have power at the box office. And I'm honored to be included among all of you and to be a part of a vital, thriving, beautiful community. Thank you so much, NAACP. God bless you. I hope y'all had a great night. Thank you. That was very nice speech. Very gracious. Her. Very gracious. Her. Yeah, very gracious. Hey. Yeah. She's always that way. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. She's yeah. always Since that she's been way. in the business. You're absolutely yeah. right. Always. Mm-hmm. Since she's been in charge. And, and then, so, okay, Steve, so on a related note, while at the awards, Amari Hardwick, we know him, of course, as Ghost from Power, uh, he, he's receiving backlash now for kissing Beyonce in front of her husband, Jay-Z. Uh, so while greeting Beyonce, uh, Omari went in for two kisses, including one near the mouth, and now Omari is getting backlash. People are tweeting, two kisses too much, a handshake would have done the job, and others are saying women don't need to be grabbed, hugged, or kissed unless you or their husband are a boyfriend, unless you or their husband or boyfriend. That wasn't bad. I saw this. Man, it's, it's, it wasn't yeah. bad at I, all. It was respectful. It, I saw it. It wasn't bad. He wasn't being disrespectful. Hold on, man. Well, let me say something. There and right he would here. be. Jay Z was standing right and there. Let, and let me just say something. I know Jay Z. We're not like close friends or nothing, uh-huh. but I know him. We always have respectful conversations with one another. If you want to know a man, Jay Z, Sean Carter is a man. If it was a problem, y'all ain't got to be tweeting. <laughs> he would have stepped to him. Uh, you ain't got. He would be stepping to him now, uh-huh. even if he didn't see it. He would step to him now. He a man. Y'all tripping, man. Quit worrying about that. Amari Howard, do you think he crazy? Right. So, do you really think this brother is crazy? I don't think so. It was respectful. He hugged her. He, he picked it, pecked her, and then he pecked her again. That's it. In Europe, I hate to tell y'all this, but it's a each double cheek. kiss to everybody. You kiss each cheek. Even men. But the moment we do something, we, we ain't got nothing else to do. We got, he got a problem. That's one kiss to him, one pay. It's a simple handshake. Shouldn't nobody kiss a simple man. Man, get, man, go somewhere. Please find something else to they do. They tripping over nothing right yeah, there. That's man. That's to be that tripping. But you know, Can that beehive, vote, and man? her fans are just fierce. They, you know. Yeah, and I don't want to say nothing about this. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's come for you. Yes, so. hey, they beehive. will. Beehive <laughs> will sting <laughs> your ass. <laughs> beehive, hey. Scared of you. <laughs> Queen That's Bay. real. They ass is real. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> no, no, they're an actual beehive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, not seriously. to be played Yeah, with. yeah. So yeah, I ain't talking girl. about them, mm-hmm. but I'm just talking about people in general. You know what I mean? You know, look. It's okay, man. And they protect that girl. And man, I wish I had a. Let me see. I need Steve a club. Had. No, I need. I want to call it something. Else. What was everybody commenting on? This? Harvey's hundreds. Yeah, no. Nah, oh, Harvey's nah. army. No, nah, because then they gonna want money. <laughs> oh goodness. Mm. So you yeah. think it was uh, harmless? Completely harmless. Major respect. Because I'm gonna tell you, it ain't a dude in this business that don't understand where Sean Carter is from. Ain't nobody finna disrespect this man. But that ain't even in this guy's makeup. Though. Who who don't know? Who don't know? Dog, come on, man. This ain't no punk ass dude here. In this, front of this, the world, though. Dog, this dude is the real deal now. Say what you want. So everybody relax. Yeah, I'd go harmless. take a chill pill. Yeah. Relax right there in front of everybody. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well. uh... <laughs> Uh, it is uh, April Fool's Day, <laughs> and the nephew is right here. He's in the building right here, right there, with today's prank phone call. We'll hear it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, doggy style, lifestyle. Ho, ho! Uh-oh. Not, okay. what, you, not what you think. Con- yeah. Down boy. Oh, you down, boy. Yeah. down boy. Down boy. <laughs> down boy. Down boy. Down boy. Okay. <laughs> it is April Fool's Day today, though, and the nephew is here <laughs> with today's on, prank now. phone call. What you got, Neff? The fool is here, on Shirley. Your day. Today on is. Your day. It's your day, baby. Wedding and a funeral. See? Mm. Wedding and mm. a funeral. 
Yeah. Let that all soak in right there. Mm. We picking Red up papers head. right now. Yes. And a funeral. <laughs> Run that cat. Feel that breeze. Yeah. Quitting at a funeral. I said it fast. Mm. Hello, this is Ryan. Hi, I'm trying to, uh, Ryan. Ryan, how you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm good. Who am I speaking to? This is Josh. Josh is over at the, I'm one of the officials at the church where you guys are, are getting married tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, man? I, I want to thank y'all for that, too, man. We, we appreciate it. Good, good. Well, we definitely hope to make you a member here sooner or later since you guys are getting married, you know? Hey, man, you know, I'm trying to get this work schedule changed up. You know what I'm saying? They got me working on Sundays now, man. So uh, as soon as I, I tweak that and move that around a little bit, I'll be there. Okay, listen, we have a, a bit of a situation that's come up. We have some problems and, and uh, miscommunication, and, and it's definitely been on our side. Uh, they had your name, Ryan, down here with your phone number as well as your, your soon-to-be wife, Sonya. They had her name here, but we, we didn't want to call her with this. We wanted to just uh, reach out and, and talk to you and see if it just make you aware of what was going on, okay? Well, what's, what's going on, man? There's been a mix-up on, on scheduling. I don't know if you know, Sister Ola May... She passed away a week ago. Oh, uh, and you're not you're not a member of the church, so you wouldn't know her. But she's one of the one of the oldest uh, members here at the church. Sister Ola May passed away. And uh, what's going on is you all's wedding is tomorrow at twelve o'clock, right? But the actual funeral is at three o'clock here at the church. Okay. Uh, what's your name again, brother? What? Josh. Josh. Okay. Look here, brother Josh. Um, Hey man, we 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 already got this thing in motion, man. We didn't send out damn near two hundred invitations, man. I mean, I, God bless yeah, sister yeah, yeah, Ola May, and, 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 and I understand that, but 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 I mean, you know, she. Well, there's no way we could have moved it around. Now the biggest problem, the funeral home is bringing the casket first thing in the morning. So what I want, what I wanted to make you aware of, and I I don't want you to tell your wife this, but. The actual casket will be in the sanctuary, but we will have it covered. Hold, hold, hold up, man. Are you serious? Now, look here, man. Y'all need to move this round. I don't know what y'all going to do. If y'all have a fellowship hall in the back or something oh, like don't, that. We don't, don't, uh, 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 Ryan, the only place we can actually put the casket, in, if we didn't put it there, is in the actual room that your, your soon-to-be wife would be changing in. That's the only oh, place. Man, you about to, man, you about to your mom. My wife ain't fixing to change in no room with no dead body. Are you kidding me? What, 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 and, and you know what? I understood that. That's the first thing I thought of. That's what I said. Let's just put the casket where it goes for the funeral, and we're going to cover it up. And see, basically, you actually get in. Oh, wow. Uh, I can't even believe you called me with this, man. Look here. And, and excuse my French, man. Yeah, I, I know I need to get back in the church. I really do. But right now, Doug, this ain't going down like this, man. Now, we didn't okay. we already pay the money. And for, for, first of all, first of all, you know, she should. I don't even feel like she even had to, 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 to pay. You know, to, to hold no wedding over at her church where she paid tithes at. That's that's the first thing. You know, I ain't like that from the jump. But I wouldn't hear the one with it because she want her pastor to marry us. And now you got the nerd to tell me that y'all we arranged something that a funeral gonna happen the same day as my wedding, and my wife got to get dressed in the room with a dead body. Well, no, we we not gonna put her in there. I, like I say, I, I'm putting that body first thing in the morning. I'm gonna put that body. In the, uh, right there in front of the uh, pulpit, and we're going to cover it. Now, what you're getting out of this, you get more flowers, because there's going to be flowers from the funeral. So I'm thinking that's probably going to be a little bit of a perk for you. I just wanted you to be Man. aware that it's probably going to be more people than you think, because some of the people that's going to be at your wedding is really for the funeral. Hey, hey, uh, hold, hold up, man. Are you serious right now, man? Uh, look here, Doc. I didn't pay for the Wedding to happen at this church, man. Okay, ain't and no disrespect to the lady that has passed. God bless her family. I ain't playing. To not put no dead body having no funeral at my wedding, man. That's crazy. What the She's f- a with y'all member down of the church too, sir. She's a member of the church too. I don't, hey, I don't give a. F- I don't be no member of the church, man. I done paid for this wedding, and it's gonna happen tomorrow, man. You not fixing to put no f- dead body at my wedding? Watch your. F- mind. Okay, 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 Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan, I mean no disrespect, but the woman has passed. She is not going to get up. I mean, what what is the problem? The problem is your called me with this man the day before my wedding, and we didn't schedule this six months ago. I done spent $25,000, $30,000 on this wedding, okay? And are you going to tell me that we got to share our wedding with a funeral? What the hell is wrong with you, man? Let me ask you something. Do you want to have your wedding at this church? I paid for the 
And like, what you mean, wrong? I'm having a wig. Okay, I tell you what, lift their body up in the bar and I'm rolling the <laughs> right out to the street. Y'all gonna sit out there in the front and, 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 and throw flowers while <laughs> throwing rice. But we're gonna have a <laughs> wig inside the same chair tomorrow. I promise you that. Sir, I can't, I cannot assure you that it won't be. As I have no other place to put the body. Okay, well, I, I bet y'all find somewhere to put it. If I get that Amara <laughs> and a body in there, it's gonna be a couple of bodies in there. And I ain't you got two choices, to move that funeral or to reimburse me back this $30,000 out an hour to spend. Those are the only two choices I want to hear about. Meet me at the front door tonight with a $30,000 cashier check. Oh, we say to have this wedding up in there tomorrow morning. You heard me? I ain't playing. I ain't playing at all. No jokes. What the is wrong with y'all, man? You can do I, something I, I, else, man. Listen, hey, I understand hey, that. Listen, I, sir. I don't, don't want to hear no more from you, man. Now, all I'm saying is it's going to be a wedding at this church tomorrow without the about it. That's all okay. I'm saying. Push Ryan, the to the back, man. Ryan, hey, I, there's, there's one more a bit of an issue that I need to tell you also. What the can be worse than a dead body? What issue can be worse than a dead body at my wedding, man? And the issue, sir, that is worse than a dead body is, this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your best man, Jeff, got me to prank phone call you. What? That's <laughs> Hey, you know what, man? The best man about to get the best whooping he can possibly get, man. I ain't playing these that got me the day before. Uh, oh, this is supposed to get the best beat down possible, man. I'm telling you. Hey, one more question. What's the baddest radio show in the land, Ryan? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, my God. I'm king of pranks. You had a king. Okay, can I, can I show you about uh, how I am the king of jazz? Can I show you that? What? Yeah. Okay, all right. Got a little something for you. Check it out. The Steve Harvey Morning Show uh-huh. is giving you a chance to win an unforgettable trip for two to New Orleans. What? Experience a weekend. Of, check it out. Experience a weekend of live music. Plus, you'll attend a private screening of the upcoming movie, Bolden. Now, a Bol- Bolden is a film about Buddy Bolden, the unsung American hero who invented jazz. This also includes airfare, three-night hotel accommodations, and more. To enter and get rules, visit Steve Harvey FM. Com, all brought to you by Bolden. Coming to theaters Friday, May 3rd. That's Steve Harvey, FM.com. You could be the winner. All right. Uh, thank you, nephew. <laughs> come on. Uh, it's time now when we come back for the strawberry letter. Uh, subject mm-hmm. doggy style yeah. lifestyle. Wait till yeah. you hear this one, okay? Okay. We'll be back with it right after huh. this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on your relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. It's just that easy. It's just that simple. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one today. Okay? Ready? Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject, Doggy Style, Lifestyle. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am a 27-year-old woman, and I just moved in with my boyfriend. We've been dating for one year, and we have a great relationship. But, of course, there's an issue, or I wouldn't be writing you. Our lovemaking is very good, but we are never alone when we're intimate. There's always four extra eyes very close by staring at us. It's his dogs. Mm. He has a Doberman and a German Shepherd, and these dogs are very spoiled and run the house. When my boyfriend and I get in the bed, they jump in too. Since I moved in, my boyfriend has forced them to sleep on the floor next to our bed since I didn't want them in our bed. I have asked them, I have asked him to put the dogs' beds in the guest room so they can sleep in there at night, but he says I'm being inconsiderate and silly. He says they're dogs and they don't understand what we're doing when we're intimate. But it creeps me out. They always come right up to the bed and stare at us the entire time. I have asked my boyfriend over and over to close our bedroom door and keep them out while we have sex. But he says they will whine the entire time and spoil the mood. I think this is very weird. I I can't enjoy sex with these two big dogs breathing on us. 
How can I get them out of our bedroom? Or maybe I should go and let the dog stay. I didn't sign up for this doggy style life. Please help. Wow. Yeah, I, I agree with you. This is weird, okay? Watching is watching. I don't care if it is dogs watching. I don't care. Unless you're into that sort of thing, and clearly you're not. This is weird. I mean, I, I think your man should definitely put his dogs in another room or uh, give them something to do while you guys are doing it. I, I think that's only normal. I mean, I, I know people love their dogs and they're crazy about their dogs and they treat them like people and, and all of that. But, but this right here is ridiculous. You're uncomfortable, you know... It, it makes you feel creeped out and everything. I, I think he's being disrespectful to you, putting the dogs above you. I think he is, Be, you know, because since you're officially moved in now, you know, I know it hasn't been that long. It's only been a, about a month or so, you say. But guess what? It's your house, too. So you get to say something about, you know, how you want your house to be run. You're the woman of the house. That means you shouldn't be uncomfortable in your own home. You shouldn't be uncomfortable in this relationship. It sounds like he's disregarding your feelings. You don't want the dogs in there during intimacy. He doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Uh, is this a deal breaker to you? If it is, you're going to have to keep it moving. Steve? Well, well, well. <laughs> Let me just say this right here. It, it, we really in here talking about some damn dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then what we talking about? In the bedroom. Dog. Now, 27-year-old lady, she she moved in with a boyfriend. They've been dating for a year. They got a great relationship. But like she said in her letter, you know, something got to be wrong else I wouldn't be writing, y'all. Right. <laughs> I love making this very good, but we're never alone. Hmm. It's always extra eyes very close by. <laughs> and it's two damn dogs. Mm -hmm. Now these ain't chihuahuas and <laughs> you know, you know, shih tzus and these ain't little <sighs> Pekingese. <laughs> these is German Shepherds <laughs> and Dobermans. Yeah, you have a Doberman, Steve. Yeah, these two damn big ass dogs. Uh -huh. <laughs> now all up in here, you got these big dogs in your house. And you want them in the other room. Now, you had your you had your boyfriend kick them out the bed. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. They getting up in the bed. No, that ain't where we stay. Get in the floor. His sheets, his bedspread stink. <laughs> because, see, let me explain something to you. Dogs smell like dogs. Uh, I don't care who they uh, are. Mm -hmm. You can bathe them every day. Dogs still smell like dogs. Now, as soon as you bathe them, they they go okay. But don't let the ass run outside and come back in. Mm -mm. They goes outside and gets a lot of dog on them, and now they back in the house. So now you want them in the other room. You ask him to do that. He says, you're being inconsiderate. Wow. Okay, now how old is your man, and is he stupid? <laughs> don't you think they're around the same age, Steve? She's yeah. 27, yeah. How old is your man and is he stupid? To tell your woman you being inconsiderate. Now, Shirley said it right. Because you're the woman of the house, you can't be uncomfortable in your own home ever. Ever. A woman should never be uncomfortable in her home ever. I got news for you. A man should never be uncomfortable in their home ever. Now, your children, deal with it. <laughs> but even a child wants to come home and be comfortable. I don't care if it's just in their room. Everybody wants a place where they can go and be comfortable. But the dogs can't have the run of the house. Shirley's absolutely right. You deserve to have comfort in your home. And you can get it. But now he's saying... All they doing is staring. You didn't ask him to put the dogs in the dress room, but he said you're inconsiderate and silly. Wow. You silly. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about putting these dogs in there? Girl, girl you, and you silly. Wow, he said wow. they dogs and they don't understand what we doing. But they wondering, though. <laughs> I, they might not know exactly 
<laughs> but they damn show sure wondering. They heads is tilted. <laughs> oh, they head is cocked to one side. <laughs> now, what your damn problem is, is <laughs> them damn dogs. Uh-huh. They big dogs. Now, if y'all don't get them out that room, they go eventually. What? Now, they, they jumps up on the bed anyway. Oh. Not then. Oh, jeez. I'm just going to tell you nice. what's going to happen. During intimacy? If we don't get these dogs out this room. They got to go. <laughs> I'm going to just tell you. I'm going to tell you some stuff. Y'all ain't going <laughs> to like this. Did you wake up the other night with your Doberman licking your hand? Man. And it freaks you out? Boy, let me tell you something. <laughs> Boy, I damn near shot up through that ceiling <laughs> like Tommy J in a cat cartoon. <laughs> All right, we'll have part two of Steve's response. Coming up at 23 after the hour, subject of the Strawberry Letter today, doggy style, lifestyle, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, let's recap uh, today's Strawberry Letter, Steve. Uh, 27-year-old uh, yeah. woman live with her man. Doggy style. Tight little letter is, what's well, sure. Doggy style, lifestyle. Wow. She got moved in with a boyfriend, been there for a year. Uh, the dogs is getting on the nerves because when they intimate, they ain't never in the room by themselves. They in there watching. <laughs> Crying. Now, she want the dogs to be put out. He done told the girl he ain't putting them out because she being inconsiderate and silly. <laughs> that is crazy. What you, what you think these dogs think? These dogs don't even know what's happening. I promise you they big ass is wondering. <laughs> What is all this moaning? What is all this driving? Why y'all naked? You finna hear some. (laughs) Next thing you know, you gonna have a dog moving in close because dogs like to sniff. (laughs) Now, I'm just telling you facts about dogs. Yeah. That's their primary sense. It's not feel. It's smell and taste. Those are the two things that drive a dog. They gonna eventually come sniffing around. Mm. Now I'm a little edgy when a dog is sniffing me with my clothes on. Yes. Now if I'm somewhere ass naked, <laughs> what I can't have is that little cold ass nose touch me. <laughs> you know, and they, they, they nose be cold. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> they keep now, you on your that. back and all of a sudden you feel this little cold dot on your ass. Do we really need this visual Yeah, right you now? need this visual because we got to get these dogs out this room. <laughs> now, I'm trying to help this lady wrote this letter. Now, you think you're tripping right now. That's because they ain't moved in to participate. But them dogs is fit to participate. Oh, God. Them, oh, we play it. They think y'all in there playing, and they going to want in on that. Now, it's going to start with the breathing. Then it's going to go to sniffing. They're going to get to smelling up around you. They ain't going to be smelling your breath either. Oh, God. Now, he might be all right with that because he know how he probably had a little cold nose on his ass before. Oh, oh God. Hey. I'm telling you, he has. He been in that house with these dogs. You inconsiderate. You silly. <laughs> Why? Because he's so comfortable with Yeah, he everybody. comfortable. Yeah. They been in the bed before she moved in. He slept with these two big ass dogs. <laughs> Them stinking ass. <laughs> My damn dog smell like a dog. He got bad breath. Man, go get away from me. <laughs> there are a lot of dog lovers, Steve, in the oh, world. I don't you know care. I let, you can be a dog lover. This my joke. My joke is for people that ain't dog lovers. This my joke is not for dog lovers. You might not. I don't think that's funny at all. But how it is to me. She says they're very spoiled and they run the house. Hell yeah, they spoiled. And they run the house. But now here mm-hmm. come one. See now we done breathed and we done sniffed. I ain't got nothing to tell you. Said what's next now? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, if yeah. we done done all the breathing and all the sniffing, <laughs> yeah. tell me what you done seen your dog do that makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> and everybody is uncomfortable with it, even a dog lover. How many times you been sitting up there eating your plate and you look over there and his nasty ass <laughs> is going to town? <laughs> and you sit up there going, man, I... Because Marjorie loves dogs. Uh-huh. But damn bear sometimes we get in front of that fireplace uh-huh. and ain't nobody looking. Uh-huh. And bear just start licking everywhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> and now Marjorie don't want the damn dog no more. Stop it, Bear. And Bear be looking up like, what? This is what I do. I'm a dog. What? Stop. <laughs> and I'm looking at him going, oh, my God. Is that the Doberman? Yeah. Uh-huh. If I could do that. <laughs> you could do what? If I could do what my dog no. do. No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you have to <enough>. myself. <laughs> <laughs> Man. <laughs> You know the moments I'd have been in had. You are so crazy. Steve, where you at? I ain't coming in today. <laughs> What's happening? I'm busy. I'm doing something. So now, I ain't said nothing nasty. I've not said nothing crude. I'm allowing you to write your own joke. Yeah. yeah. On your way to work. But we all know what our dogs do that embarrass us. Yeah. Well, he going to walk up to you and really embarrass you. He said, wait a minute. Oh, oh, everybody got the, oh. Oh, oh, everybody got their ass out now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, this is what we doing? First, he going to start with just himself. Oh, this is what we doing. Dogs are smart. You've got to get these dogs out of your bedroom. Because eventually they're going to want to make, a, to want to participate. Is this a deal breaker? I think it is. Now, here's what I think you could do, young lady. This is how I think you can solve the problem. You're going to have to issue an ultimatum. Either you put the dogs out of the bedroom and get comfortable and make them get okay with being in the room. They're going to learn to stop the whining. They're going to stop. And if you don't get them used to it, then you're going to hear my whine. And we're going to see which one of these you like better, the dog's whining or my whining. Because my whining comes with consequences. I'm not making love anymore in okay. front of these damn dogs. I'm mm -hmm. not it doing is. it. Okay. Now, I want to be with you, but I'm not doing it anymore in front of these dogs, period. Right. Secondly, if that don't work, here comes the other ultimatum. Either you put the dogs out or I'll go, I'll go out. Let me go back to where I was until the dogs can sleep on their own. Because all you want is to have privacy. Mm -hmm. You want the dog sleeping in another room? You didn't ask the man to get rid of the dogs. Right. You just asked him to move the dogs around. Yeah, she knew she, he had them when she moved in. So those are the ultimatums. I can't do this anymore with these dogs. I'm uncomfortable. Call me silly if you want to. But I tell you who really going to look silly. You in there with them damn dogs and y'all looking at each other. Now, they can lick they self. You can't. <laughs> yeah, they going to be fine. You won't. Mm. Hello. And can't you train dogs, Steve, to do what? what they'll you be can fine. train dogs yeah. to sleep alone and everything. Yeah. All right, guys, we got to get out of here. Email oh, us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter. It's Steve Harvey FM. Now, coming up in 10 minutes, we'll talk about the shocking and tragic death of hip-hop star Nipsey Hussle right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Very sad news. Uh, we've been talking about this all morning. Grammy-nominated hip-hop artist and activist Nipsey Hussle was killed on Sunday afternoon in a shooting outside of his store called the Marathon Clothing Store on Slauson in Los Angeles. It left two other people wounded. Uh, Nipsey grew up in gang culture. However, he was incredibly involved in his local community in which he worked to prevent gang violence. He helped spear a major art initiative in his home neighborhood called Destination Crenshaw. But just a couple of hours before, uh, Nipsey tweeted, Having strong enemies is a blessing. Having strong enemies is a blessing. He tweeted that right before he was gunned down. He was 33 years old. Um, yeah, LeBron James. I, I, huh. just, I, just, I just don't. I'm so, I'm so tired of our self-hatred of one another. Yeah. I'm so tired in, in my community, in our community, of how we have devalued life to the point where we, we just taking it. Just taking it. Some, something is, something's desperately wrong with us. We, 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 we live in a sick world. And our community suffers even more sicknesses because of opportunity and exposure. But acts of senseless violence like this, 
I'm a man with no consideration for human life, with no consideration of this man's children, no consideration of his wife, his mother, his family members, his friends, nothing, man. We, we've we gotten to the point where we're so desensitized that we are doing this far too frequently in our community. It's just, and, I'm, and look, I know what poverty does. You know, people say that the root of all, money is the root of all evil. The lack of money is the root of a lot of evil that I've seen. The lack of it, because people get so much in despair. Now, that's not all poor people, though. So please don't get me wrong in that. So let me just make sure that I'm clear with what I'm saying. I'm not saying because you're poor, you're violent. But in some people's quest to get money, they have no problem perpetrating violence, is what I'm saying. And I've seen more poor people commit acts of violence in the name of getting money, getting paid. That's all I'm saying. But enough is enough. But even in your act of getting paid, and look, man, I understand what it is to want money. I really, really do. I wanted some desperately. I wanted some desperately, man, because I was just sick of it. But not at the expense of another human being's life. Not at that. Not, not, I was never that. Not for money. And it's just sad, man. It's just really, it's sad on so many levels. It sends the wrong message to our young people. And, you know, we yeah. this gang affiliation yeah. stuff, man, is one of the most ridiculous things that we've done in our community. And I'll just say it, and I've talked to a lot of bangers, and they know where I stand on this. It's, it's so senseless. We're fighting over something we don't even own. You don't own none of these streets. Most of us don't own nothing on the street. You know, and then the people who do become homeowners are terrorized in their own neighborhoods because gangbangers is out here and making it unsafe to walk and go to school and go to the store and go to church. You know, man, and we got these gangs out here that terrorize innocent people. You know, got people paying extortion money, protection services. We just extorting, man. We, we just we just sick right now. And I just and of course, this is happening every day to majority of these things that's happening is to non-famous people. It just gets an extra light. It gets a light put on it, period, when it happens to somebody that's quote-unquote a celebrity or famous. But this is going down every day, y'all. Yeah. This is going down every day Thank somewhere. Yep. Senseless it's very sad, yeah. It's yeah. very sad. Yeah. I mean, you know what, see, my husband, he... Um, he follows Nipsey Hustle, and he came home um, yesterday when the news broke. He was like, man, he was one of the good guys. He was making a difference. Yeah, man. Mm. You know, he was like, it's just senseless what we're doing to each other. Man. I mean, man, this kid this kid had turned his life around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Grew up in gang culture and was now was doing everything in his power, talking to the red and the blue side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, this dude was about it, man. And I don't even, I never, don't know him personally anything Mm -hmm. but just knowing what he was about Mm -hmm. but let me say this though whatever he did it didn't it didn't deserve this right whatever your beef was it it wasn't this because he didn't kill you why you kill him man see we you know man look if we were talking an eye for an eye it, 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 do you know how many how many less crimes it would be? But see, because most of the stuff we're doing is we just overreact so much. If you had a beef with this brother, that stopped it. Now you gonna go to prison for the rest of your life. You and her, you and her, you gonna go to prison the rest of your life. And now some more families is gonna suffer because it's it's some more mothers gonna be missing. But the problem with Nipsey Hussle's mother, she don't ever get to talk to her husband. At least yours can come down there and see you once a month. Mm. That's sad. Yeah. That's craziness, man. That's sad. It's craziness what we do. Yeah, it, it just... Uh... We're in a dark space, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hearts are broken for more and more. 
Man. You know, that was her. Oh, man. I was her man. Her this heart, woman. The father of her mm-hmm. child. Doc, this woman, these kids. Yeah. Over what? Still trying to find that, figure that out. Steve. Whatever it is. Yeah, it's yeah. Don't even you know, know, man, what is your monkey ass getting ready to say? Man, get out of here. All right. Well, uh, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll switch gears a little bit and talk about the NCAA Final Four. Tommy, Junior, Steve, it's set. (laughs) We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Kira, it's on you. Men's Final Four, NCAA. Uh, Let's go. Oh, it's set, man. It Mm. is set. The Final Four is here, man. We got all. Do you know something, Junior? What's up, uh? I didn't see a game. I was on the plane. Oh, man. Oh, you missed some good Yesterday, ones. Yesterday, you missed it. Uh, oh, my gosh. Auburn is in as yep. a five seed. They play in Virginia and Texas Tech at the three seed, playing number two, Michigan State. Yep. Auburn, Texas Tech, yeah. Michigan State against Auburn and Virginia? Yes. Yes, wow. sir. You, wow. Wow. So, so who's what's missing for you, Steve? What What's... <laughs> What Duke, school uh, you? Duke is missing. <laughs> yes. That done blew everybody's bracket up. Yeah. Duke yeah. is missing. Auburn then shattered everybody's bracket because nobody, nobody picked Auburn. I can no, promise you nobody. nobody picked Auburn. And I didn't think Auburn would get past Kentucky after they lost their star player. Yeah. But them boys came in there and wore them. Oh, Hold man. Hold up, man. But Texas Tech, though. Yes. Can I say something crazy to you, man? Do you know Texas Tech could win this whole thing? Possibly. You think so? They them boys is bad. Yeah, man. man. Them boys play defense. I'm talking about 48 minutes of ball hawking hell. Red, <laughs> red Raiders, <laughs> baby. That's it. But they in Lubbock, Tommy. Yeah, they in Lubbock. Oh, okay. But you know what? Um, the, the crazy Ooh. thing about um, I could not believe Auburn did Kentucky. That I, was the they shot. play good ball, man. I watched that game. They play some good ball. That was the shock. I know Charles Barkley is somewhere going crazy. What oh, he, he did a backflip, Junior. Oh, Kobe. I mean, I mean, I mean uh, Barkley. Yeah, hold, hold on, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, final four. <laughs> we in the final four. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Okay, Kobe and them didn't make it to the final four. <laughs> Shaq ain't make it to the final four. Kenny and them, we we ain't even talking about Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't gonna make we had Ernie, Ernie. We in the <laughs> final four. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know Charles is happy, man. This is crazy. I, I, but that, but that other game, oh, you missed, man. That Duke Michigan State game, I, I had to give it to him. Michigan State took the lead off of three from Goins with 34 seconds left on the clock. Say it again now. They took the lead with a three. It was 65-67. Goins comes down, man. Power four pulls up, knocks down a tray with 34 seconds left. Oh, man. Duke had it. They had it. Wow. But, nah, that's it, man. It's set now. But, you know, Duke, they last two games was in the last second. They've been struggling. Yeah, because they can't. um, I don't, don't, you know, man. (laughs) It's a, now, this boy Zion, I want y'all to know he is the truth. He Zion, is that. Oh, he played a great game. I'm going to just tell you this right now. And I watched them both very closely. I know Zion him. Zion. I know him. Is better than it. LeBron <laughs> at 18. What? He got a three ball. Bye, That's for sure. Bye. <laughs> bye. Yeah. Bye. Oh, oh, a good gap. No, I'm Steve, talking is about. Is he going pro? Is he? Uh, if he stayed in college, it would be a miracle. It okay, would just so be a miracle. He's he's a one and done guy. He's okay. one and done. He's at the top of the. That you're not picking anybody over him. No, he's no, good. he's the team. And I got another thing I want to say about it too. Hmm. And you know, I always said that I didn't want LeBron to come to LA. I always said that. We all agree. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you said that. From you said always that. said you that. Now they're saying they're resting LeBron so he doesn't further injure his groin. That's not the truth. I don't, I don't believe that, that no. at all. I believe that they're resting LeBron because they know the season is done. They're not going to get him injured in meaningless games. And 
they're they've thrown in the tile. We're not gonna make the playoffs. Let's go on and lose these games and get a better shot of a lottery pick. Mm. That's exactly what they done. Bruh, you tell you gotta be kidding me, because if you leave LeBron, LeBron out there, he's a competitor. He's gonna yeah. find a way to win. They don't want that. We don't need no more wins. We got no. enough. We need ales. Now let me ask you something. How's the lottery system done now? Uh now it's uh like the fourth, the the, the Last four teams uh, that's finished last, that finished worst, I think they have, like, a different percentage now. It's broken up. Somebody's going to have a higher percentage than the other, but the other three are going to have the same percentage. Oh, who gets the pick. first picks? Yeah. Right. So. But those last teams will get the first four picks. Yeah. yeah. And the Lakers just need to be in it. That's See? what they're trying to do. And, dog, uh, that's why LeBron ain't playing the rest of this season. But I think, I, think, I think LeBron is disappointed because I think that they made promises to LeBron that they could not keep or deliver on. And I think, I don't think LeBron is a happy Laker. I don't think. Now, I don't know, I haven't spoken with him. I ain't spoken, spoke nobody in his camp. This is just us doing just boy trash talk. Yeah, just boys right. talking trash. I just mm-hmm. don't think he's happy as a Laker. But I do think he can play. Ain't nothing wrong with his growing. Hell, I rest my growing all the time. Not that I want to. I have to rest. No, I think I got a <laughs> pool growing right now. <laughs> It's the same injury. <laughs> same Ain't thing, dude. The same level. What? Wow. Yep. An NBA <laughs> injury. Yep. So my groin. I've heard it all now. Yeah. You're right, Shirley. Yeah. My groin hurt if I talk loud. Is the show over? <laughs> That's it may as well be. That's a different groin. Yeah. See, Shirley, this all us. This how men talk stuff. <laughs> He said, my growing her if I talk, hey! I, I, mm, I, I pull yeah, something, I. boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I pull something talking. Pull something speaking to somebody. Oh, wow. hey. uh, <laughs> yeah, man. So I think I think I don't think LeBron is a happy Laker. I think that they I think that the management of the Lakers has said some things that's disrupted though. I think the coach is concerned about his job. Uh, oh, definitely. He gone. Oh, I think he gonna be gone. He's gone. Yeah, Luke Walton won't be there next year. But you said it right though. When they put all them guys on that on that uh on Trump that list block. to be traded, yeah, yeah man, that, that that killed the morale, man. That hey dog, the hey dog, you messed their head up. Yeah. yeah. So you would trade all of us for LeBron? I knew something was wrong with him when LeBron <laughs> broke Michael Jordan's record and they all gave him a light high five, and when he was on yeah, the yeah, end of the bridge really. crying by yeah. himself, and ain't Aww. nobody go over there and say deserving. I, no. I, I I watch men, man. No, they didn't. Oh, Dog, they haters. just stayed away, they whatever. Didn't. Yeah, them little. You saw Roger little... Rondo sitting on the other side of the team bench. You know, Rondo got is mostly something wrong with him any damn way. He's yeah, once fail. he spit on Kyrie that day, that uh, I mean, not Kyrie, yeah. uh, Chris Paul. Chris Paul. See, you just dog. W- w- Dog, what you doing? <laughs> that ain't the part of hey, the Hey, we gotta go. We'll be back. You sound, you sound like Chris Rock on Jesse. What, what are you thinking? We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this, guys. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We got to say congratulations going out to Janet Jackson for being inducted finally into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Go on, girl. Yes, congratulations, Jackson, Jackson. Hey, boo-boo. Jackson, right. hey, boo. <laughs> All right, she thanked her fans. You Take a listen. You've been with me every step of the way through all my ups, all my downs. I never have and I never will take you for granted. I love you with all my heart. Thank you so much. Aw, that was I love sweet. you too. Aww, Janet. Aww. I sure did. If you shut your eyes, you think Michael was talking. Yeah, they all sound alike, don't so. they? Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Janet was uh, inducted by uh, Janelle <laughs> Monet. Janet became the sixth member of her family in the Hall of Fame following her brothers in the Jackson uh, five and uh, Michael is also enshrined as a solo artist. Janet did not perform at the ceremony, though. A source told the New York Post that uh, that is because Janet is preparing for her metamorphosis residency in Vegas. So that's been her focus. But others believe that it has more to do with the family suit against HBO, which will air highlights of the ceremony 
on April 27th over the documentary Leaving Neverland. Uh, and we know that's why she didn't perform. Yes, why she didn't perform at the hall, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Because normally when you're inducted, then you perform. That's normally how it goes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. But she didn't perform. Why, Shirley? Uh, because they say she's preparing for her um, residency. She's going to have a residency in Vegas. It's called The Metamorphosis. Um, that's the name of her show. Anyway, that's been her focus. They're saying that's why she didn't perform. But others think it's because her family is suing HBO, and HBO is going to uh, air some of the highlights of the uh, rock and roll in- inductee ceremony. On April oh, 27th. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So there's family is suing, of course, over Leaving Neverland, the documentary. Okay, okay. So she's going to be in Vegas, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going yeah. down. I'm going to that. Yeah, we're going yeah. right got to go to that. Yeah. So that's why. But congratulations. It's a happy time for her. She won, you know, and yeah. everything. So that's really good. She deserves Yeah, that. she definitely did. She definitely. sold some records. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go and take my wife with me. Excuse me? To see Janet? Yeah, yeah. I'm just okay, well, like did, that, I mean, were there other choices? What are you, what are you talking about? Of course you're going to take your tickets. wife. I'm, I'm going to get two tickets that's not by each other because I don't want her to see me hollering <laughs> louder than her wow. when Janet I, 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 That's what I want to see is when y'all walk yeah. through that door and you take her to a seat and then you go sit somewhere else. <laughs> That's what I want to see. see that Can you film that for me? <laughs> well, Steve, you know, it's hard for Tommy to control himself. You, you do know that. Here she he, go. Here <laughs> she go. When someone's on the stage that he really likes. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, excuse me. Uh, Didn't Tommy tell us yes, that he knew Janet now. when yeah. he was in uh-huh. the play? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Which I'm going to call, call her for tickets like you call me for tickets, Paul. <laughs> what? Ain't the same. <laughs> we never saw pictures, so no one can be Ain't sure. Ain't the same. Yeah. We never Ain't saw pictures. It'd be um, nice if you could. I'm going to have her call in. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have her call in. We can put a stop to this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh-huh. do that. Every time you have a call in, we end up talking no, to Johnny. No, no, and no. Don't... No, no, no. No, no. That's good. Yeah, go ahead. Have a call. And don't okay, worry, cool. Tommy. I'm not going to tell them about the time you lost your mind when Fantasia performed on stage. I'm not going to. You just that. did it. Did oh, I man. do that? Oh, we all know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, he. Whew. Man, Ooh. Tommy. <laughs> I was scared for you. <laughs> your wife was sitting right next to you. <laughs> all right, coming up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning <laughs> Show <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We're going to talk about the 50th annual NAACP Image Awards that was this past Saturday, uh, that were this past Saturday uh, in Hollywood. It was hosted by Anthony Anderson. We have to say, Steve, dun, 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 congratulations to you. You won an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Game Show Host for yeah. Family Feud, baby. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, huh? Come on, now. You brought that home. Congrats. Mm. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. That's really good. That was big, man. You know who, who notified me as soon as it happened? Oh. Roland Martin. Oh, wow. Roland. And nice. I think I was on a plane, mm-hmm. or I was in the car heading to the plane. Th- was it Thursday night? Mm-hmm. Was it Thursday night? Oh, when you were leaving? No, when was the Image Awards? Saturday, Saturday night. night. Saturday night. night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was at the function. Yeah, you were auctioning mm-hmm. off for things. Yeah, I was at the function. I knew I was in the middle of doing yeah. something. Uh-huh. Yeah, Saturday night. Yeah. So thank you very much. It was big. You know, the Image Awards really do mean a lot to me. They really, really do, man. Yeah. I cherish those more than the Emmys that I get, and I mean that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seriously, mm-hmm. they, they, they all over my office. Wow. I love those. Okay, and uh, yep. congratulations again. You won for Family Feud, so look at you. Power won for Outstanding Drama. Amari Hardwick won for Outstanding Actor. Go ahead. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, well deserved, I think. Blackish, oh, I love Blackish, won for show. Outstanding Comedy Series. What a brilliant series. That's my boy. TV show, I love yeah. Show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> RB newcomer Ella May won Outstanding Album, and Jay Z mm-hmm. won the President's Award. Uh, and Beyonce was named Entertainer of the Year. And then Black Panther. Oh, Black Panther. Black Cleaned Panther up. won everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Same thing. Should have had me at the Oscars. Yeah, Wakanda yeah. forever. <laughs> uh, so now we're going to talk about, Steve, uh, you said you've already spoken to Chris Rock. Um, 
He ignored uh, the no Jussie Smollett jokes rule. Hell yeah. <laughs> Take a listen to this. I guess I gotta present an award that said no Jussie Smollett jokes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. What a waste of light skin, you know? <laughs> you know what I could do with that light skin? <laughs> That curly hair, my career would be out of here. <laughs> Running Hollywood. <laughs> um. Yes, no, 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 just. Did, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was he thinking? <laughs> from now on, I ain't never gonna know just. You a Jesse from now on. You don't even get the you no more. <laughs> <laughs> that you was respect. You ain't getting no respect from me. <laughs> That's classic, right? <laughs> no. That was just Comic really at good, work man. right there. <laughs> and you know, but you know, no Jesse Swallow jokes. But you know, I mean, it's humor, man. I mean, you know, and people get tight about it. But man, I mean, it's the obvious thing. It's on everybody's mind. And what was they laughing at? They were laughing. Right, at the jokes. Yeah. No, they was hollering. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Steve, thank you. We'll come back and do our last break of the day and have some closing remarks right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are, last break of the day on this Monday. Uh, Please. Leave us with some closing remarks like only you can do. Well, uh, and congratulations, we have to say this one more time for your win. Come on. NAACP Image Awards. Uh, yes, sir. For hosting Family Feud, best game show host. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. I We're do. proud of you, Steve, as always. Thank you. You know what? In light of what happened to uh, this young brother, Nipsey Hussle, it was so disheartening to hear. He and I were not close, so I didn't, I didn't really know much of him at all, you know, we've never had a, you know, lengthy conversation, anything like that. But I was just thinking about the senseless murder of this young man. Um, what I want to talk to us about is, you know, what, what has happened to us, the explanation can be very, very deep. And it can be f- it's a way it's a wide wide range of things that we can point to that has caused this world to turn the way it's turned and this world has always been an ugly place to be in for a lot of people but it's 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 pretty bad right now and at a time when we were all hoping it would be a lot better for all of us No, we were hoping that racism had been faded by now. You know, we were hoping that the country was open to people of all different religions. We were hoping that we would be big enough to accept each other's sexuality. We were hoping that we would always remain a country that the Statue of Liberty supposedly was to stand for out there. Uh, none of these things have come true. Uh, it's one of the core reasons is we are such a country of little faith. You know, we have on the back of our dollar bills and our money and God we trust, but I mean, really? Then it must be obvious that there's a lot of people who don't trust in him because there's a lot of people in this country doing doing the devil's bidding and we've we've lost touch with our creator we our moral compass is broken we want to continue to call ourselves the greatest nation in the world but this greatest nation in the world has a lot of problems now i'm from here you know i was born here i've survived here I've been downtrodden here, and I've thrived here. I've been through the whole gamut. And I'm going to just say this. It ain't been easy. Uh, This country called the United States did not make it easy for me. 
I don't know that I could have been what I am anywhere else in the world today, but I'm just saying this to you, that this country did not make it easy for me, as it don't make it easy for a lot of people. So this nation that we want to keep saying is the greatest nation on the world, in the world has the highest prison population in it. This nation that we want to keep calling the greatest nation in the world has the uh, highest murder rate of any country in the world. We lead the world in murders, man. You know, you can say what you want to say about Mexico. You can say what you want to say about Venezuela. You can say what you want to say about the motherland. But I got news for you, man. We tripping. We over here, man, like we the greatest nation in the world, but we keep a knowing the fact that we have some of the greatest problems in the world. Oh, we may not be the poorest, but we doggone show ain't the safest. Oh, 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 we may have far more opportunities and freedoms than everybody else, but we so free that anybody can walk in and buy a gun and then walk in any school, walk in any theater, walk in any church, any church, and open fire. We so free. Oh, yeah, man, we free. and We're the greatest nation on earth. But we can't get so many things right. We got at the highest office in the land tweets going out on a daily basis about things that he shouldn't even be talking about. We have with us right now probably the most unpresidential president we've ever had. The gig is up for me. I keep saying this is the greatest nation in the world. But man, when I look at the problems we got, see, see what we can't keep doing is painting ourselves as the greatest nation in the world and not try to continually solve the problems that keep us from being really a greater nation that we could. Or are we just a great nation? Are we just the greatest nation in the world for a select group of people? Uh Uh-oh, now I think, now I think I done found what I'm trying to say. We're the greatest nation in the world for some people. But for the rest of us, we still under oppression. We still fighting for voting rights acts. We still trying to keep our sons from not getting killed on the way to school and from school, I, I'm i not convinced that we're the greatest nation in the world as long as we're going to keep leading us in gun violence and in prison population. I don't think that's right. I don't know which one it is, but I don't think we need to keep calling us. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase wow. necessary. Drop Void it, where prohibited. Yeah. Participants word, must be legal U.S. residents it. at least 18 <laughs> years <laughs> old unless otherwise stated. <laughs> right. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 